Greetings and salutations. It is Wednesday. It's day for another chemical stir fry, and uh, I've been told that I need to go faster, so I'm going to go faster, but I won't talk this fast. Oh, whatever. Okay. Today I'm going to show you how to do the world's fastest two-part mold, and we're going to use a magical material. Well, a couple of them, actually, but the one I'm going to use that's the real magic is right here. It's called algae. Some of you might know it as alginate. Some of you might know it as algae, but that's what it is. We're going to use it for a different purpose today, and that is to make the first half of a split mold. All right, here's your basic shape, and more or less good enough for a two-piecer. So we're going to put the box together ever so quickly. All right. And as is the norm, every Wednesday at 12 o'clock, as soon as we start the camera, we get a truck. That's just how it is. So we just need to go into acceptance over that, everybody, myself included. So, okay. You gotta remember how this works. I think it works like this, yeah. Okay. These mold boxes make life pretty darned easy. Uh, it's nothing more than pieces of polyethylene. Uh, many of you who have been in here before know these pieces intimately. Um, so all I do is basically put them together like an accordion and then I put the clamps on them. Home Depot. All right, one. Two. Three. And finally, four. Okay, so we got four clamps on this guy. Now, I don't know if you can see this or not. Let's see if I can't tip it. All right. Can you, I don't know if you can see the guy or not. Probably not, but let's do the best we can. I'm basically just going to slide the box up now to where it's in contact with the base of the model because I still want a giant four spout. Okay. Now that I've got that, I can see that if I want, I can do a little bit of readjusting and make this puppy a little bit smaller. And all I have to do, this is what's so cool about these boxes, is I just push. Boom. And I can basically reposition this thing any old way I want. So it's just a matter of sliding. Now, the reason we can get away with this is because we are using silly fast material. Um, even the silicone is fast, but the alginate is actually faster. The nice thing about this is that this alginate material, um, we can make it work in just a matter of oh, five, six minutes. Okay, so. We have got water, and we have got alginate. The one thing we don't have is the other cup. But we will have that momentarily here. I'm back. OK. Empty cup. So the basic trick is alginate. Water. Now this is more water than you would normally use when you're mixing alginate. Typically you're gonna make this stuff into a paste. We're not worried about making a paste. We're worried about making a casting resin. Okay, bye-bye. So I want it to be kind of runny. Maybe, in fact, I even want it runnier than that. There we go, okay. Now this is clearly skin safe, although it is not the dental version, it's not gonna hurt you. I mean, don't breathe it, that would be kind of silly, but uh, this stuff's not gonna hurt you. The only reason I'm wearing gloves is because I was messing around with some liquid plastic earlier, and even worse, I was messing around with some of the So Strong pigments, and if you've ever uh, gotten So Strong pigments on your hands, well, you know, it's really easy to do. You basically look at the container, and next thing you know, it's on your hands. That's just how it is. Okay. So, mix, 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 mix. I could even put more water in this if I want to, but this will work. This will get the point across. Okay. So far, so good. Now, I'm going to just pour material in here. Now, I realize you cannot see what I'm doing, but I have a magical tool for fixing that. It's just that I've kind of run out of hands. But we'll get there, I promise. So 
So what I'm doing is, if you recall, the whole trick to this two-part mold thing is the ability to find the split line where you want to divide the, the, uh, the model into the two halves. That is the trick, okay? So, yeah, we're okay. All right, you ready? Some people say, why is it you're carrying a cell phone around? Well, it's because we can use the cell phone as a camera, and I think that's kind of cool. All right, so that's what I did. See him in there? Nothing more than uh, a little porky pig salt shaker thing that we've got laying around here. But um, that is the final product, at least the final product so far. So I have cast this alginate stuff in and got halfway. Now those of you who have made two-piece molds, the alternative way is the way that, it, yeah, well it's the alternative way. You do it with clay, all right? And you just basically get the clay up to the halfway point of this thing um, then you can cast the, the rubber over top of that. And uh, once that cures, then you're ready to cast the second half. Now, what we've done here is we've eliminated not only the step of having to carve that clay. I'm going to take this camera away. You ready? Okay. Uh, we've eliminated the step of having to sit there and mess with the clay. But more importantly, we've eliminated the step of cleaning the clay afterward, which is the part that truly sucks. Because if you get clay in the little cracks and the crevices and the nooks and the crannies, you gotta take all that stuff out. Or when you make the other half of the mold, you're not molding the piece, you're molding the piece with the clay. And it may not necessarily be exactly what it is that you want. So this stuff does not take too terribly long to cure, okay? It's still liquid right now, but I used warmer than normal water, so we'll probably have what we need in about the time it takes, eh, more or less, for me to mix this stuff. But I will give you one little thing. I did play Betty Crocker a little bit, and I've already done one here, okay? So what we can do is we can certainly pour that, but I'm gonna go ahead now and show you what happens. We're gonna set this guy over. We don't need him right now. Where I put? I put here. That work. You don't move. Okay. Sort of Russian. I don't know why. Okay. Pull the clamp. Home Depot. Lowe's. Squeeze clamps. All right. This stuff. Mold boxes. We've talked about mold boxes before. The point is to make something that works. It's kind of like a golf swing. Nobody really cares what it looks like until you get to the golf ball. At that point, before that, so what? Okay. I just happen to know somebody at a local plastics distribution outlet that uh, let me have access to a scrap bin, and that's where I got all this stuff. You would know it as bathroom wall material. Okay, so. That's basically what it looks like without the walls. Nice thing about alginate is that you can trim it up with almost any old thing, right? Now this shape is not Porky Pig. This is a tiki under here, but I only had one tiki and I only had one Porky Pig. So I kind of worked with both. They're both shapes, good enough. All right, watch this. This is the magical part. Boom, done. By the way, that's what it looks like on the inside. See? It's kind of cool. Now, you see all the air bubbles? We don't care, okay? So, away in the trash that goes. So now I've got the first half of the mold. It's already done. Somewhere around here I put a knife. I don't remember. We'll do it the other way. Okay. All right, the next step in doing a two-piece mold normally would be now is where we clean up all the clay. But we're, again, we don't have to do that because we're not using clay. So the next part would be, I know I put that knife somewhere. Here it is. We've got to make keys. What keys are going to do for us is we're going to align one half of the mold to the other half of the mold. And this is terribly complicated. Basically, you just get a couple of places, ideally four or five places if you can, if you're that patient. 
and just cut out a piece of a silicone. Okay? So I'm going to do one over there. I'm going to do one over here. Okay? I'm even going to do one over here. And just in case this is an obstruction, I'm going to set those aside. At least get them over here, because we are going to need them again. All right, so I've already got three keys. There's nothing in the world that says you can't go to a corner. Okay? Cut a corner off. All right, so now really, technically, I'm up to four different keys. And again, the goal here is to make sure this mold's only going to go together exactly one way. All right? And I think I've achieved that. I think. All right. Now, next impertinent step. There's only one thing that sticks to silicone. And that's called itself. All right? So, the next important step here is to make sure that this silicone doesn't stick to the silicone that we're about to pour. This mold release is called Ease Release 200. Okay, it works. Vaseline would work. There's probably half a dozen or more mold releases that will work. But here's the important part: all of them don't work. Okay, do not assume you can grab any old can of mold release and expect it will work. Greatest example I can give you is this stuff that we have called Universal Mold Release. You'd think by the name it would work, and it will not. It is the best adhesion promoter there is for silicone to silicone, except for maybe bullseye primer, which I'm told is absolutely the bomb. So if you ever want it to stick, now you know. Universal mold release or uh, whatever that stuff was I said, Zinzer something. But this will work. This will absolutely work. So make sure you get a good coat. Notice that great fog. <laughs> It's perfectly safe here. Perfectly. I tell you, I've huh, been doing this all my life. <laughs> I'm fine. Not. Okay, good enough. Ideally, you let it flash off. Okay? So, the next thing is, we go back to this magical mold box thing we built, and we put it back together. Only we do the other half. Isn't that just amazing? Swami. Okay, I did something wrong. What did I do? Oh, I did this wrong. There we go. All right. Boom. Take this little guy, jam it over here. Make sure it'll fit. Yeah, it gets the point across. Okay. Clamps. Not easy to do. Flip it around the other way. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something's still wrong. There we go. Okay. I knew if I thunk about it long enough, I'd figure it out. Okay. There. And once again, once you get them clamped, it doesn't mean you you have to call it quits. Uh, just like I'm going to have to do here going to adjust. Let loose one, pull it in, push it in, readjust, adjust some more. What we're looking for is the gap. Okay, we're making sure that we don't have a gap if we can possibly avoid it because what happens with a gap, here we go, ready? Can you see inside there? Inside there you see that little noogie that I cut out of the corner? Okay. What we're trying to do here is we're trying to make sure there's no gap between the sidewall and the plastic piece that I put in there. Okay, see that? And see, we got enough space right there where we can bury them. And the cool thing is, just like with the other piece, I'm close enough to the end there to where when we're done, yeah, that'll be plugged up with silicone, but I can cut it out easy, and next thing you know, I've got a big, giant pore hole. Okay. So hopefully that all makes sense to you. All right, I'm coming off this camera. Ready? Okay. It's cool to have a cell phone as a camera. All right, so that's sitting there. 
Now, just to let you know how quick this stuff is, it's done. So at this stage of the game, I could really pour either half. So I don't care. Any, meeny, miny, moe, catch a rabbit. Hmm. I'm going to pour this one. I got enough tiki's. I need another piggy. Okay. Uh, not high tech. This is the same old stuff that we like to use for just about all of our demos. It's the Mold Star series of platinum cure silicone. It mixes one part to one part. It comes in a handy dandy trial kit. Looks kind of like this. See? And that little number on the end tells you a couple, three things. Most importantly, it will tell you the hardness of the silicone. In the case of Mold Star 16, however, what it doesn't tell you is the most important part. It is screamingly fast. Okay? That's why we don't fool around when we're doing this stuff. It's two colors. See? And it turns into a lovely shade of, uh, I don't know, what is that? Aquamarine? Uh, some color. Some shade of blue and green. And... How can you tell when it's mixed, he said. See, I'm asking questions for you. You can tell it's mixed when it's all the same color. But are you sure? What happens down in the corners? Oh, very good question. What happens down in the corners is that if you don't get down in the corners with the edge of that stick, see, edge, then you'll have little places down there that are unmixed. And you'll know it's unmixed because when you're pouring it out, all of a sudden it comes out looking like saltwater taffy. And you don't want that. Okay. So, you've seen this a few hundred times maybe if you've hung around me long enough. But same old drill. We're going to pour in a thin stream. Well, a mostly thin stream. We're going to pour in as thin a stream as a person can pour who hasn't had lunch yet. Okay. And I'm letting the material flow over the surface. And I really wish I could get you to see this. Here, I can make you see this. Watch this. Last week I held the camera upside down. This week I'm going to try really hard not to. Let's see if I can do this. Ready? Let's see if I can rest it on something. There we go. Oh, isn't that just special? Okay. Now, I too am looking into the camera. I am not necessarily looking at the stream. But if you could, it would look like that. Okay. We just pour, 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 pour. Notice I'm not trying to pour on an area that's not already covered in silicone. Okay. The reason for that is we want the silicone to do the work. We want the silicone to flow over the surface. We don't want to pour the stuff all over the surface. We want the silicone to flow. Okay, so okay. You uh, have just witnessed the casting of a silicone mold. Okay. So that's that. We're well over top. We're well over top the surface. And um, it'll turn out just fine. And when it is through, all I will have to do, just like I did with the other one, is strip off the alginate. Uh, after I pull, pull the box apart, strip off the alginate, um, clean it up, hit it with mold release, put the box back together again, and pour the second half, and we're done. All right. Now, uh, what time is it? 12.19. It is 12.19. So that means in the course of approximately 19 minutes, and that's assuming that we started on time, and I don't think we did, look what I did. I did all kinds of crazy stuff. The most important thing was you watched me strip a mold that had already been set up and the first half cast of a two-piece mold. And then turn around and, yeah, I did a second one, but okay, so what? In the time that we took, which was 19 minutes, I cast and stripped a mold, okay? If you jam 30 minutes in between there to let the rubber cure, okay, now I'm at 49 minutes, right? 
So here we are at roughly 50 minutes now going into a mold building project for a two-piece mold, and we're basically ready before the second half. I think that's pretty cool, and I think you should too, okay? So uh, as far as this is concerned, I'm done. Now, let's talk about what's gonna happen going forward, and we're gonna shut down, be done with it, so you people can go eat your lunch, and more importantly, because I'm greedy right now, I can go eat my lunch. All right, this weekend, muy importante, that would be October the 3rd, yes. We have got the basic mold making class, uh, Julia Merriam is doing that one for us, and that starts at 10 o'clock. There are still some slots available. You can get that online if you go to www.theengineerguide.com. The following weekend, I must say, has not yet been completely set up in its entirety, but I will tell you that so far the fun does include the face casting class by Matt Green. But what we're trying to throw in is a very basic hairbrush class. It's not online, but we're working on it. And the reason why is because the following weekend, compliments of Cynthia online, who we dearly love and who was supposed to be in here so I could show pictures of her, but she's not in here. So anyway, she's going to do a full-scale professional airbrush makeup class. That's a two-dayer, okay? There will be information available, but I will tell you, um, you look at the price, it's not gonna look like it's cheap. It's going to be 995 bucks for two days of hands-on instruction. But out of the proverbial box, what you get is you get the airbrush and the airbrush compressor, and you get basically, um, I wouldn't call it a full kit, but you're going to get a very, very adequate kit of makeup supplies that you can use so that you can start right away doing your own special airbrush makeup jobs. And there you go. Um, it gets bigger, it gets better, it's just that there's only so much that I can remember at one time. So watch Facebook, we're putting the events up, that'll make it a little bit easier for everybody. Um, things around here are hopping, we appreciate it, this is going to be a crazy month for us, it's going to be a crazy month for you. So uh, let's stick together, we'll get through it, next thing you know it'll be Thanksgiving, life is good. I appreciate it, have a beautiful day. Sayonara. Bye-bye.